Uh, this site uh, provides excellent habitat for spotted salamanders and uh, uh, if you're here on the right night, you can actually see thousands of the adults uh, breeding. The, the first uh, warm night at the end of winter or the first part of spring where you get uh, a situation where you've had a light to heavy rain going on all day, so all the vegetation is wet. You get temperatures that are, are 50 degrees or higher. Uh, if you would be out here on an evening like that, that would be the ideal conditions for a, uh, a spotted salamander run. And as I mentioned, you know, you can see thousands of them. They'll be in the shallower parts of the pool, kind of in the areas where I'm sitting right now. At that time of the year, inundated with probably about all oh, six to eight inches of water, and it's ideal circumstances for their breeding behavior. Uh, they get in big concentrations. There's a little give and uh, take, a kind of a little dance that goes on, and the males nudge the females. Uh, the males actually then uh, put down uh, spermatophores onto the, uh, the bottom of the pool, usually on top of the leaf litter. Uh, the females will follow a male and, and then uh, pick up the genetic material and that starts the, uh, the eggs reproducing and within a, a few days then the females lay the eggs in the pool and basically then the adults leave, although some of the adults may be around for as long as three weeks. But uh, for the most of their lifetime, uh, the spotted salamanders are in the surrounding woodlands, the upland part of the woods, not in the wetlands part of it. Um, and they. Um, they spend a great deal of their life underground, so most of the year it's really hard to find an adult spotted salamander. But if you come on the right night when there's a breeding event going on, they're easy to see then. Um, once the eggs are laid, um, they stay in the pool for at least a month. Um, depending on the weather, uh, it, they can develop you know, quicker or slower. Generally a month is about right. And then the larvae hatch out. Um, and the larvae um, are, are just little tadpole-like organisms, uh, but they have very large gill structures, which are quite visible. And the, uh, the larvae will live in the pool for a, at least two months, longer if the pool will stay wet long enough. Uh, interesting part about uh, the, the uh, spotted salamanders and, and others in this uh, genus is that they can read uh, um, environmental clues and they can tell how long the pool is going to be wet. So if it's a, a dry year and the pool is going to dry up sooner than most years, they'll accelerate their development and uh, they'll, they'll metamorphose at a uh, smaller size. Uh, conversely, if, if you've got a year where the, uh, uh, it's wetter and the pool is going to stay wet for a good period of time, uh, they'll slow down their uh, development, although uh, they'll keep growing, they just won't metamorphose. They won't absorb the, uh, the gills uh, until much later when they're a much bigger size. Um, so they, they are able to tune into what's going on with the pool and they adjust uh, accordingly in their development. Um, so somewhere around two to three months, the, the larvae then turn into young adults, what we call uh, metamorphs, and then at that time, uh, they leave the pool. Uh, at first, they kind of hang around the border of the pool, uh, but in the end, they migrate out into the surrounding habitat and, and find themselves uh, uh, an area to call their own, uh, somewhere within the upland woods, and, and start their life as an adult. And, and then within a couple of years, they can reach sexual maturity, and they'll be involved in those breeding runs uh, that we see every spring. Adult spotted salamanders eat a lot of different types of invertebrates. Uh, they're, they're basically ambush eaters and uh, uh, we mentioned they spend a lot of their time um, in burrows underneath the ground. They often use the burrows of uh, rodents have already constructed. At times they'll dig their own burrows. Um, they'll come above ground when they get hungry and maybe lay under the leaf litter or uh, a fallen log and then they'll feed on whatever an invertebrate comes along. Um, the larvae, while they're in the pool, uh, they pretty much become the top predators and uh, they'll feed on a lot of different things, um, including a, um, a lot of the insect larvae that are developing in the pool um, and uh, uh, quite an array of other things. And in fact, they'll even feed on each other if there's a variance in size and uh, some of the other, other larvae are small enough to allow them to be able to be swallowed uh, by some of the bigger larvae. In a lot of pools, the uh, spotted salamander larvae would be the uh, top predators. Um, in this particular pool, uh, because we also have tiger salamanders using this uh, for development, uh, it can, the tiger salamanders are enough bigger that they can often feed on the uh, spotted salamander larva. Now the, uh, uh, the spotted salamander larva, by the time they metamorphose and leave the pool, they're going to be about this size, you know, roughly right around four inches, something like that. Uh, whereas with the tigers, they're a much bigger animal. Um, and the larvae have, have uh, really large mouths for the, compared to the size of their body and they can swallow just about anything. 
that's uh, almost things that are as big as they are. And when they metamorphose, they're going to be more like about you know six, maybe to eight inches long. Uh, spotted salamanders are uh, kind of unique in, uh, in that for the type of uh, salamanders that use vernal pools, the, the distribution for most of our species is somewhat regional to, to a degree or another, depending on which species you're talking about. But with this, the uh, spotted salamander, it's one that has a uh, occurrence in all 88 of our counties, so it's something we can find clear across the state. Um, so any place where you have uh, this vernal pool habitat and then you've got some good upland woods uh, nearby, you can find uh, spotted salamanders. Now there, the studies that have been done show that uh, you need to get to about 50 percent uh, forest cover in the surrounding 200 meters before you're going to see spotted salamanders. Uh, so when you get into situations like that, if you've got a temporary pool that fills up every spring and then you know dries down by midsummer or, or earlier, then it's a good chance that that could be spotted uh, salamander habitat. And uh, uh, if you're interested in this species, that's where you want to look for them.